Hey guys, he wants blood here, and today we're going to be talking about Swift and proxy camping. Now, this game is balanced around randoms and two kills to escape. That is the mantra for the game. That is the way the game is balanced. Is not balanced against Swifts or anything like that. That's why some questionable things happen. This game favors the new player experience while leaving people who play a lot or for hours kind of out of the loop. That's why so many things are nerfed questionably. So for this game here, I know this is a Swift. Now, I know people question a lot, like how do I know it's a Swift? Well, there's two things. One is I kinda, I kinda get a feel for the gameplay. Cause when I play solo queue a lot, and you can kind of tell when somebody's a swift because of how altruistic they are. You never see somebody going for randoms, for body blocks for no reason. You never see them willing to go down for a random for no reason. And those are usually very telling signs. And on top of that one is build similarity as well. And I don't mean dead hard. Uh, and dead hard unbreakable DS. Yes, that's that's obvious, you know. But when they have playstyle similarities or build similarities and all this nonsense, you kind of start painting a picture that it is a Swift. Now, another thing I want to tell you is the, this Swift is taking advantage of the Boon Totem. What's this right here? <laughs> uh, they're taking advantage of the Boon Totems and really cranking out the heals and taking these protection hits. They're putting them in good locations, and I know they are. I kind of heard one just now. But they're putting them at good locations to take advantage of it, and they're just taking protection hit after protection hit. As you can see, that person's healing in the background, and I'm reloading. And reloading takes three seconds, and this walk shouldn't take that long. But look, they're fully healed already. Two people fully healed in that short amount of time. So this person has a build to take advantage of Boon Totem healing times and how absurd it is. I think with a good build, you can heal with the Boon Totem in about 6 seconds, 8 seconds. It's something truly ridiculous. So this group is uh, taking advantage of it and I'm, I'm, I caught wind of what they're trying to do. So I already have my eyes set on what I'm going to do. I just have to wait for the opportune moment to really put it into fruition. Now, this is also a very, very bad map for Huntress. Like, as you can see, I can't throw over this thing. There's so many windows and so many uh, line of sight blockers in this map. But it's, it's difficult, look. It's very difficult to do anything with Huntress. Yeah, I might get some cheeky hits here and there. Like, uh, that forehead hit with that, uh... Nia, or uh, actually the Michaela, but it's very, look, there's no way for me to throw hatchets in most of these loops, so I already knew I had to take advantage of mistakes because this map is atrocious, and this game isn't built around um, having communication, a swift, a group having communication, it's not communications outside the game that's why it is not included in the game and people find ways to talk outside of the game now I'm not complaining about Swift Snow uh, people are gonna want to play with friends and this game is fun with friends you know it's very fun with friends and you can kind of goof off depending on what kind of Swift you are so I see the appeal I really do and I'm not complaining about that uh, it's more or less the way the game and developers choose to balance the game that I have an issue with and it's just that simple players are gonna play the game and they're gonna play the game to have fun and playing with friends is fun that's it it's the simple truth of it so I have to find a way to pressure them and put them in a bad spot now this person loves free dropping pallets so I kinda wanna chase this person make them drop as many pallets as they can so that I can try to continue pressure to handle these swifts and I know they are very altruistic so if something happens they're gonna come and rescue each other so I need to put them in a situation where 
they have no choice but to come in being super altruistic and rescue this person who's chucking pallets after pallets in front of me. I'm also taking advantage of this. I'm trying to create some dead space, some negative areas. Even though that doesn't help me that much because all these line of sight blockers like you see here. And Huntress movement speed is terribly low. So because she has hatchets, but when she can't use her hatchets, this is what happens. So I have my one down. Now I have to line up the opportunity. So before I hook this person, I'm going to reload and I'm going to start setting my plan into motion. Yes, they only have one gen done. However, they can turn that around in an instant, especially with how long it takes me to chase here because it's really difficult for Huntress in this map. So I already know they're going for that totem because that's the easiest totem that they already know is here. And now I have my plan in motion. I have two people. They finish a gen. I have two people here. And I have this pressure from someone slugged and someone hooked. I have half the team here. And this is the pressure I need to win. Because I'm at extreme disadvantage in this map if I play fairly. If I do everyone hook, 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 hook without tunneling, proxy camping or anything like that, I will lose this game. And I have much as right to win this game as the survivors do. There goes another gen with one survivor on it. So now I have three people down here. And that last person has to come off gems to get them. So now the game is in full swing in my control. I'm going to reload while this person dies on hook. I got all of them injured. One person, two people down, and the last person injured. So now the game is in my favor. They can't do any cocky plays. They can't body block. They can't do anything here. Here, this is a, an amazing amazing hatchet uh, dodge and I really even when I was playing I was like oh good shit you know I kind of hype up the people I play with uh, I'm just like that if they do something really cool or good I'm like oh my god that was fucking great you know even if it screws me over I, I call I'm able to say it for what it is you know it, it was a good play and that's that's it and um, so now look how the game completely changed for me after slugging people and playing defensively. Ooh, I swung at wall that time. Since she's the dead heart here, I already knew I can get her. So I uh, turned around and went back for her. But look at, look at the game now. The game is in my favor, even though everything was against me from the start. Now with one dead and one slugged and basically everyone hurt, they can no longer keep up their play style, and the team's gonna crumble. That's that's it. That's game. The whole team down. Uh, they can no longer take advantage of their builds and their communication. Because even if they could communicate, well, they're gonna communicate. I'm down here. I'm being chased. Communication does nothing in this scenario because. They had nothing to deal with this scenario. So you, you can talk all you want, but I put them in a situation where there was nothing that can actually be done with the information. Unless one of them had a really well-timed unbreakable, then that would be something that could have been communicated and, and a play could have been made, but it didn't seem like any of them had unbreakable. And plus, the pressure I kept putting on them, I, I think I, unbreakable wouldn't have mattered. Some of them would have been up a little longer, but ultimately I don't think it would have affected the game that much more. Especially since I didn't really tunnel anyone. And so no unbreakable DS. If I downed someone and I wanted to pick them up, I could have. So you might be asking, um, besides intuition, how do I figure they're a swift? Well, after I take a look at their build, I'm going to examine a few things for you and I'm gonna let you in on a little tip so right here boon of healing boon shadow step borrow time calm spirit borrow time iron will shadow step circle of healing borrow time 
Iron Will, Dead Hard, Adrenaline. You see, if I played the way they wanted me to play, that borrowed time would have wasted so much time for me in a map like that. And I figured they had all these things. Now the trick that I know there is Swift is PS5 tells you. Yep, outside information, just like communication in a game that's not supposed to be there. This tells me when you're in a Swift, so I know how to plan and play accordingly. But as always guys, thanks for watching, stay tuned for more, and I'll see you guys soon.